So imagine that you're sitting at home and you're watching a basketball game on your TV. What you're actually seeing are a bunch of still images put in front of one another. And what you're doing is taking those still images and putting them together in your head and basically telling yourself that you're watching a fluid, realistic basketball game. So how is it that we're able to do this? And this is what the Gestalt principles basically attempt to address. Oops. Gestalt principles. So the Gestalt principles basically seek to explain how we perceive things the way we do. So why is it that we don't tell ourselves, hey, the basketball game is just a bunch of pictures, but rather that it's a fluid, realistic representation of, of a basketball game? Well, there are several different laws or principles that the Gestaltists came up with, and we're going to look at each one of these and look at an example. So over here, we're going to look at the law, and over here, we're going to write down the definition. Okay. So the first law or Gestalt principle is the law of similarity. So law of similarity. And the law of similarity basically says that items that are similar to one another are grouped together by your brain. Grouped together. So what does this mean? Let's look at an example. So in this example, you can see that there are squares and there are circles. And basically there's a square here, there's a square, there's a circle here, and so on and so forth. And maybe the first thing that you noticed was that this image looked like there were a bunch of squares on top of one another and a bunch of circles on top of one another. So in other words, your brain naturally noticed a pattern. And it naturally noticed that the squares kind of created this vertical column and these, sorry, the circles created this vertical column and these squares created this vertical column. So your brain naturally organized this picture in vertical columns rather than in these longer horizontal columns. So this is what the first Gestalt principle is saying, is that things that are similar to one another, so circles, will be grouped together by your brain. So the second Gestalt principle is the law of Pragnans. Pragnans. And this basically says that reality is often organized or reduced to the simplest form possible. So reality is reduced to simplest form. And what do I mean by this? Let's look at an example again here. So here you see five circles that are juxtaposed on top of one another. So what the law of pragnans basically says is that we look at this image and what we do is we, we break it down into five circles. So here's one circle, here's two circles. So why is it that we don't break it down into more complex shapes? So we could look at this object and say, okay, here's this weird diamond -y oval -y shape over here and then there's a semicircle over here and then we've got, or you could say here's one line and then here's another line. So we can look at this and break it down into much more complicated shapes, but we don't. We look at it and we just notice that, hey, here's a circle and here's another circle and they're on top of one another. So we're basically looking at this fairly complex set of lines and reducing it down to its simplest form, which is five circles juxtaposed on top of one another rather than more complex shapes that are coming together to form this uh, image. So the third Gestalt principle or law is the law of proximity, law of proximity. And this basically says that objects that are close to one another, that are close to one another, are grouped together, grouped together. So let's look at an example for of the law of proximity. So over here, we see a bunch of circles when you look at this image, you naturally notice kind of this, this pattern, rectangular pattern of circles, and you notice this other rectangular horizontal pattern of circles. So these circles are grouped closer together than this set of circles right here. So basically your brain, let me just erase these so you can see. So why is it that we didn't just look at this set of circles and, and kind of put them together. Well, that's because these circles are closer together than 
than these ones are. So there's, there's more of a distance here between the circles than there is over here, smaller distance. So we naturally look at the distances, we naturally look at how close different objects are and group the ones that are really close to one another together. The next law is the law of continuity. And the law of continuity basically says that lines are seen as following the smoothest path. Lines are seen as following the smoothest path. So let's look at an example. So in this example, we see, a, again, a bunch of circles. When you look at these, you kind of notice that there's this continuous flow in this set of circles rather than a flow this way. And that's because the angle here is much less steep than this angle. You kind of, your brain naturally draws this, this line over here and notices that these circles are continuous, whereas these ones are a little bit discontinuous. And so another thing that your brain does when you're looking at this image is that it basically takes these circles and kind of organizes them as one entity. It kind of puts them together. It notices a pattern that, hey, these circles are forming this continuous line, and it kind of puts it together, and you group these circles in one kind of category, one mental category, than, than these guys over here that are kind of in their own separate category. And that's what the law of continuity basically says. And the final law, or Gestalt principle is the law of closure. Law of closure. And basically this is just saying that laws, that objects grouped together are seen as a whole. So we ignore gaps and complete contour lines. So let me just write down definition. So objects grouped together, together are seen as a whole. So let's look at an example. So over here, we see this kind of angle over here. We see this angle. We see this weird Pac-Man looking um, semicircle thing. And your mind naturally fills in this triangle. I don't know if you guys saw this, but there's, the, there's like this triangle here. There's this, there are gaps. And your mind naturally fills in the gaps. It fills in the contour lines. And you kind of perceive this triangle. So let me just go ahead and remove that. You can see that even though there isn't actually any triangles in this image, your brain is telling you, hey, there's a triangle. You're noticing this triangle. So that's what the law of closure is basically saying, is that your mind's filling the missing information to create familiar shapes and images.